John chapter number 10, the 6th through the 10th verse, from the New King James Version of the Bible. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to them again, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Mm -hmm. I am the door. And if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. All right. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. Yes. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The word of the Lord Amen. is blessed. Amen. For a few moments, or today, I want to dialogue with you from the subject, Jesus is your door. Jesus is your door. And for a thing I want to give you on today, understand that God's people should be determined to enter through the door that Jesus is. This emphasizes, my brothers and my sisters, the importance of actively seeking, entering, and remaining in close relationship with Jesus. Jesus, my brothers and my sisters, is the door of salvation. Yeah. Uh -huh. He is the door of fulfillment. And he is the door that leads to eternal life. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is your door. Jesus. The chronicler states in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways mm -hmm. then I will hear from heaven yeah. yes, Lord. and I will forgive their sin and heal their land Reverend Slater in this journey that we call life and in the midst of us Calling on his name, humbling ourselves, praying and turning from our wicked ways, we often earnestly ask God to open doors for us. Uh -huh. If I could be so bold, on today, all of us have asked God to open up doors in our lives at one time or another. I want us to understand that it may be desirable for us. Deacon is glad in the midst of our circumstances for these doors that we ask God to open to lead us to prosperity. Greater opportunities or blessings that we don't have room 
enough to receive. But let us grasp this critical fact on today that when God opens a door, no man or woman can close it. And when God closes the door, no one can open it, not even ourselves. When we seek God's intervention in our lives, we must recognize that the door that we are asking God to open is not a physical door. But rather, and I want you to understand, it is a spiritual door. And this door, my brothers and my sisters, is Jesus Christ himself. But just as Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And Jesus is the life. We also must understand that he is the ultimate door through which we find guidance, fulfillment, and salvation. Let us remember that our faith in God's timing and his divine plan are are far more significant than any physical door we may be wish that we may wish to be opened or closed. My brothers and my sisters, we must intentionally and consistently trust the doorkeeper of our souls. Well, amen. For his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. And when we look at his ways, his ways are high and lifted up. Tell your neighbor that Jesus is your door. As we continue to engage this process, Brother Jason, that will ultimately, ultimately lead us to our purpose, let us keep in mind that Christ is the way, the door, and the doorkeeper of our soul all at the same time. I'm gonna let that sink in. And not only is he the door, Reverend Slater, he's the way through the door. But he desires for us as the doorkeeper of our souls to walk in genuine relationship with him mm-hmm. while we strive to walk in genuine relationships with one another. Mm-hmm. And we have to understand that this doorkeeper of our soul, he stands on the threshold of our hearts. Mm-hmm. He offers us peace. He offers us redemption. And he offers us purpose in our life beyond all that we can ask or think. But just as the door provides security and protection, we understand in the pages of scripture that Jesus is our refuge, our strength, and our help. In our stronghold in times of struggles and in our time of trouble. And the one thing that we all have in common is that we all deal with struggles. We all have trouble. And we are in need of the doorkeeper to regulate what goes on in our lives. It is my prayer on today that we not only seek open doors of opportunity and blessings in our lives but it is our mandate or our purpose to walk 
through the door of grace and mercy that Jesus is and extends to us. Do I got some folks? Grace and mercy. Come on. Who want to walk through the door? That Jesus is. Remember that this door is not merely an entrance or an exit, but this door, Jesus Christ himself, is the very essence of our faith, mm -hmm. our peace, and he is our motivation and our way to redemption and or salvation. When we understand this, as we approach the door, and that door is Christ himself, we must approach Christ with reverence yes, yes. for the great things he has done. Mm -hmm. We must approach Christ with gratitude. Every day. And we must approach Christ with a heart full of hope. Mm -hmm. My hope is built. Or nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. So we approach Christ with the spirit of humility. And not only do we approach Christ with the spirit of humility, we need to approach one another with the spirit of love and humility. And think it was, we can only get there. Amen. If we follow the will, the way, and the direction of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. the songwriter said, lead me, guide me along life's narrow way, for if you lead me, I cannot stray. Hallelujah. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me. Oh, Lord, lead me. Amen. The gospel of John, my brothers and my sisters, was written by John the Apostle. And John is one of the sons of Brother Zebedee. And John uniquely identifies himself as a disciple whom Jesus loved. Deacon Grant Research indicates that the early church fathers strongly supported this, this authorship, contributing to the traditional belief that the Apostle John wrote this gospel. Through the writings of the early church fathers, they reinforced the connection between the Gospel of John and the beloved disciple. Through our studies of the Gospel of John, we recognize this Gospel as a significant and influential text in Christian theology. It's also known for its deep spiritual Wisdom. Yeah, yeah. Well, it highlights yeah. Jesus' divinity, uh -huh. portraying him as the Son of God. Yeah. And it emphasizes his teachings on salvation, yeah. eternal life, uh -huh. and the kingdom of Almighty God. Yeah. We understand that John's original audience consisted of both Jews and Gentiles living in a larger Greco-Roman world in Ephesus and beyond towards the close of the first century AD. Now I want you to understand this. In MIT Smith, I want you to make sure that I'm right when I say this. The central verb are y'all with me? Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. 
The central verb in our text is am. Y'all with me? Amen. Say the central verb is am. This serves as the present tense for my note taker. This is the present tense of the form of the verb to be. Amen. And since it's the present tense, that means it's right now and continuously. Am I in my grandma today? So the key word in our text is am. It's the present tense of to be. Now, we're going to take it slow right here. And when we use the pronoun I, the verb signifies existence, identity, or a current state of being. Y'all with me? Yeah. Therefore, when Jesus says, I am, he's revealing crucial information about himself, his eternal existence, his identity as the Son of God, and his identity as the Christ. And he identifies his sole role that he is the only one that is that can be an all-sufficient savior. In our text, Jesus is making a profound declaration, Sister Diamond. He's making a declaration about himself when he states I am the door mm -hmm. then for my folks who travel to Jamaica Queens we are not talking about the restaurant mm. <laughs> Jesus says I am the door however on today I want us to understand the transcendence of Jesus. I've stated it before, but I'm going to state it one more time. Not only is he the door, but Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and the doorkeeper all at the same time. In verse number nine, he reiterates the essential truth from verse number seven. When he made the declaration about himself, not only, and this is the good part, not only did he declare that he was the door, but he also gave us a promise. Did y'all catch that? Yes. He gave his sheep a promise to paraphrase Jesus not only does he declare that he is the door but he promises that if anyone follows him check this out through the door that he is he or she will be saved from sin and saved from eternal torment. And that eternal torment, my brothers and my sisters, is hell. Uh -huh. Tell your neighbor on the right, hell is real. Hell is real. Tell your neighbor on the left, I ain't going. But see, this, my brothers and my sisters, lets us know that those who are in Christ or, or those who are his sheep will experience God's love, Amen. God's compassion, 
God's forgiveness and his undeserved salvation. Somebody should be shouting like this. This should be motivation, Brother Todd, to get us to walk through the door that Jesus is knowing that there's compassion, forgiveness of all the mess we've done, and salvation. Corinthians states, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. There's some benefits from being with the door. Furthermore, Deacon Woods, when Jesus states he is the door, in context, Jesus is letting us know today that he and he alone is the exclusive way to salvation. Amen. He is the only way. Amen. Jesus of Nazareth, my brothers and my sisters, is the only. Somebody say only. only. He is the only access point. He is the only access point that has ever existed which we can arrive at and be granted access into the kingdom of God. And Jesus is the only means by which individuals, that means us, can enter into relationship with God and receive spiritual nourishment from God and protection from God. So today, my brothers and my sisters, this clearly lets us know that we must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we must intentionally prioritize our relationship with him. That means we got to give Jesus some time even when we don't feel like giving Jesus some time. But not only should we prioritize our relationship with Jesus Christ, but there needs to be an intentional effort to cultivate and stimulate growth in our personal relationship with the master. We got to be intentional about what we do when it comes to our God. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Lastly, and I want, I want y'all to hear this. We must understand that in this statement, Jesus emphasizes his divinity and his distinctive role as the one true savior of the world. And he emphasizes the fact that he and he alone is the one true mediator between us and God. With all of this said, What will we encounter when we are determined to enter the door that Jesus is? Number one, we will experience redemption and deliverance. When we cross the threshold of the door that Jesus is, we will be saved from sin and we will be saved from hell. As sheep 
belonging to Christ and being in Christ, we have the benefit of experiencing the unconditional love of God. We get to experience the forgiveness of all our sins. And we get to relish in the salvation that Jesus Christ provides. So point number one, we will experience redemption and deliverance. Amen. But not only will we experience redemption and deliverance, mm -hmm. point number two, we will be liberated from our enslavement to sin. Mm -hmm. When we are in Christ, we are set free from the heavy burden of the sins we enjoyed. Oh, Amen, Pastor Mosley. Come on. I'm doing the best I can. We are no longer in bondage to our old selves. And we are no longer constrained or controlled by the ways of this wicked world. Amen. As liberated children, of the Most High, we always have access to the blessings of God yeah. Amen. and the protection of God. Somebody ought to shout there. Yeah. Furthermore, we understand that we have the blessings of God and the protection of God. And because we have the blessings of God and the protection of God, my brothers and my sisters, there's no need for us to fear. There's no need to fear. I'm going to see it one more time because God is our refuge. Amen. Our strength. And he's a very present help in times of trouble. And because of all of that, there's no need for us to have any anxiety when we find ourselves in him. All right. Point number one, we will experience redemption and deliverance. Point number two, we will be liberated from our enslavement to sin. But last but not least, Point number three, we will find yeah. nourishment and rest for our souls yes. while we dwell in a God mm. who gives us an overflow of peace uh -huh. wow. and abundance in the land. Come on. In the book of Ezekiel, uh -huh. chapter 34, verses 15 and 16. We understand by the words of Ezekiel that God will carefully keep his eye on those who enter the door Amen. that Jesus is. Right. Due to the fact that he gives attention to those who are in him he has promised that he will give those who abide in him everlasting peace. Amen. Due to the fact that we have peace, we understand that peace breeds rest. Are y'all with me? Peace breeds rest for those who are weary. And it offers us rest Sister Monique, even in the midst of the storms of life. Amen. Furthermore, we have the assurance that even when we become lost, and we all become lost at one time or another, but when we become lost or detached, isn't it good? 
good to know that God will never leave you nor forsake you even in your time of being lost. The songwriter simply says, no, never alone. No, never alone. See, he promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. But we understand instead of leaving us alone, God will search for us. He will bring us back to the fold safely. He will tend to our broken wounds. He will, and he will strengthen us in the midst of our weakness. Tell your neighbor that Jesus is your door. So with Jesus is your door. There's redemption and deliverance. Yes, sir. We find liberation from our sinful ways. And as we go through him and dwell in him, we will find nourishment and we will find rest. The songwriter simply says, Blessed quietness. Holy quietness. Amen. What assurance in my soul. Hallelujah. On the stormy sea. He speaks uh-huh. peace to me. Yeah. Amen. How the billows cease to roll. See, when we realize that Jesus is the doorway to salvation. Uh We have unquestionable assurance in our souls when we come to grips with the reality that Jesus is the doorway to all fulfillment. We have unquestionable assurance in our souls when we truly understand that Jesus is the doorway to eternal life. We have unquestionable assurance in our souls when we dwell on the fact that Jesus is the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. We have unquestionable assurance in our souls. See, the songwriter says, not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but he smiles, quickly drives it all away. Not a doubt, nor a fear, not a sigh or a tear can abide when we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there no other way to be happy in my Jesus, but to trust him and to obey him. My brothers and my sisters, if we're going to have the benefits of Jesus being the way and Jesus being the door, we must faithfully follow while placing our trust in his way. There will be temptation and there will be trials as we strive for the greater. We must faithfully follow while we place our trust in his ways. There will be disappointments and we will be mistreated. I'll say it one more time. We must faithfully follow while we place our trust in his way. Sometimes pain is going to be unbearable, but we must faithfully follow while we place our trust in his way. If we are to experience the blessings of life with Jesus as our guide, if we're going to overcome obstacles that are too high for our progress, if we're going to stay committed 
in the midst of difficulties and stay committed in the midst of the test. We must faithfully follow while we place our trust in his way. See, I don't know about you, but I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining each and every day. Still praying as on the bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. Through my faith on Cain's table land. See a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. As we endure the struggles, we stand strong. Continuing the journey without giving in when we get delayed. We stand strong. Continuing the journey without giving in. Do I got five folks up in here, up in here, that are willing to stand strong and continue the journey without giving in? See, sometimes we may be broken. There will be challenges. There will be setbacks. But we stand strong, continuing the journey without giving in. See, there will be roadblocks. There will be detours. The enemy is going to set up pitfalls. There will be painful situations. We're going to deal with some difficulties. But we stand strong. Continuing the journey without giving in. See, there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing by Jesus' word. See, it sounds like music in my ears. The sweetest name on earth. The songwriter goes on to say, Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. CHMBC, we're not giving up and we're not turning back because we know he loves us and we know that he cares. We will do our best to be the best because we know Jesus loves us and we know that he cares. We will strive for a deeper relationship with our Lord. We will do our best to grow our faith. We will seek God for more knowledge and more wisdom because we know Jesus loves us and we know that he cares. We will seek to have understanding. We will seek to have a growing faith. We will live the best life and the blessed life because we know Jesus loves us and we know that he cares. We're going to walk in the fullness of life. We're going to pursue his blessings day in and day out. We will live the abundant life because we know that Jesus loves us and we know that he cares. And because we know that he cares, we're standing on the promises of Christ the Lord. Bound to him eternally by love strong accord. Overcoming daily with the spirit sword. See, we're standing on the promises of Almighty God. I'm standing on the promises of Christ. My Savior, I'm standing on the promises of Almighty God. See, sometimes I get weary, but I'm standing on the promises. Sometimes I get sick, but I'm standing on the promises. Sometimes I find myself alone, but I'm standing on the promises. Determined to enter the door that Jesus 
is. Number one, when Jesus is our door, there is redemption and deliverance. Number two, when Jesus is our door, we find liberation from our sinful ways. And when Jesus is our door, as we go through him and dwell in him, we find nourishment and we find rest Amen. for our weary souls. Hymn 279, I'm standing on the promises of Christ, my King. Through eternal ages, let us pray this ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and I will sing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Do I got five folks who are willing to stand on the promises of God no matter what the circumstances look like? 